nutrition um, so that they can thrive. So that's really the premise behind it. Um, it's, you know, partnering up with with the people around us who are already doing great things because that's, you know, there are a ton of um, organizations out there doing amazing work. A lot of people just haven't heard of them. So it's, you know, taking the strength that we have, joining forces with people and amplifying it. Mm -hmm. One of the, you know, we're going to clap at everything they say pretty much. Are, this, is the best, this is the best crowd ever. It's yeah. just like, yeah. yeah. Just, <laughs> feels so energized. Yeah. Like, yeah, let's keep doing it. <laughs> the, the thing I learned that inspired me the most, and you know, there are a lot of foundations out there, and, mm -hmm. you know, um, folks w with the kind of platform that you have, have have foundations, but with Eat, Learn, Play, uh, I love this, I, this vision that you have that it's not just a, a linear solution that you're you're thinking of like you know raising money and then providing services providing meals for kids you're actually thinking about it from um tackling the issue and then hopefully it there's a there's a solution behind it so you need you need some policy changes as well mm -hmm. and, and I, I wasn't sure if maybe one of you m might even be thinking about you know running for office but i do know that <laughs> that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that there, there, there's uh, perhaps the, the vision is that <laughs> I feel <laughs> that in theory sounds great, but I feel like he wants to keep his hair, and I would get in way too much trouble. I don't know because yeah, hearing we'll be from silent leaders, yeah. <laughs> make from change a lot behind of, the scenes. Hearing from a lot of what you say, I actually think you you would you're incredibly electable. By the way, I mean, you, would, you would win Talk to him. Talk every to him. election out there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, but where I was going with that was that, you know, the, uh, working and partnering with elected leaders is going to be a part of your vision. Absolutely. So we actually already had the opportunity um, to partner with First Lady Newsom, um, and it's it's been amazing, you know, just advocating for change. And the goal for me, um, as you guys know, EAT is really my laser focus, um, um, and so just ending childhood hunger, it's, it's, a, it's a national issue. And um, it's really the goal to like get out there and advocate for um, you know, policy change. And so that is a goal of mine. We're inching our way towards it. Um, but- Tell about uh, the school breakfast program. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, I wanna, the, the goal is to start here in, in the Bay Area, ensuring that every child gets to go to school and have a breakfast program or a lunch program free of charge, um, and then scale that out nationally. But it's, it's insane to me that that is al not already happening here. You, you look at you know, other places like Europe, these children are getting the most amazing um, lunches, um, test scores are great, um, you know, ev everything is better when um, your child is fed some sort of nutritious meal to start out their day. It really is you know, the beginning means to a happy, healthy, thriving life. And so I feel like it starts there personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's kind of wild to think about like um, kids going to school and they're already in debt. Like they can't pay for yeah. their school lunches. Like yeah. how does that happen, you know? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually yeah. experienced that as a, uh, as a young and growing up. Um, I would go to school and wouldn't be able to get a lunch because the account was in a deficit and... I just think that's insane. It just, it shouldn't be the case, so. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we have Eat, Learn, Play, and we're so excited yes. yeah. about the work that you're, you're going to do. Yes. Um, that you already are doing. And I don't, you know, a lot of times when we're, we're out there, we're volunteering, we're giving back, um, we're doing it because, you know, it comes from the heart. And uh, maybe we don't even think about, like, you know, one person we help, five people that we help that we're making such a huge impact. Um, but for you, um, both of you, <laughs> do you, do you even, do you ever think about like how tremendous of an impact you're making, not just, um, you know, one kid, but like the entire, uh, the entire, uh, Bay area and beyond. Um, yes. I think in terms of, um, just our experience, 
you know, being here in the Bay Area, just the people that I get, I get to interact with on and off the court, in the arena, you know, in the community, <clears throat> all the stuff that the Warriors do, do in, in the community, trying to reach out and create that connection. You hear so many amazing stories um, of kids that are super, super talented, have amazing vision and potential, but the opportunity is they're staring off at it in the distance and they, you know, it's like you're almost looking at the Salesforce tower and it seems like it's, you know, a hundred miles away might as well be because the opportunity isn't there. And so for every time you hear a story like that or, you know, go to, uh, we had the opportunity to go to the East Oakland Boxing Academy, um, you know, over the holidays and kind of just be around, you know, motivated kids that found a place, a safe place to go to, uh, you know, after school to kind of invest in themselves. And there's so many great people that are, you know, investing in, in the youth as well. But just like think about just if they just had a simple opportunity to get to that next level from like, like Aisha mentioned, you know, going to school and being being fed so that they can, you know, be f attentive and focused and energized in class. And then that leads to, you know, a safe place to play after school where it's not just, you know, being a part of sports, which we know how much sports can teach us about ourselves and, and building confidence and community. But, you know, you're you're act, you're actively playing and you're getting a benefit from that. And then you know, on the back end, you think about, you know, their college or their educational journey from whatever age through, you know, college completion. There's it's the well, the, the total kind of, you know, formula of, of creating healthy, happy, you know, childhoods and lives. And um, I think in terms of just where we are right now, um, I think about just, you know, the 1,000 kids that came to our launch event right downtown Oakland at Lake, Lake Merritt, and you just think about, you know, what impact they can have on the world, and I know it sounds kind of cliche, but, like, whatever we can do to give them, you know, just even a, a, a step on, on the ladder, um, that will go a long way, and, and uh, we all can feel good about, you know, our impact and our involvement in that process and giving back because we all had people in our lives. You know, the reason that we're all in this room, we had people in our lives that looked out for us, you know, in some way, shape or form. And, and like Aisha said, we can be that village. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, very rewarding and impactful. And I think it's, it's the most selfless thing any of us can do uh, as, we go, as we go about our lives. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I know, we're just going to keep clapping after every answer. <laughs> so, it, I mean, quite honestly, right, like to be here on a Friday evening and to listen to these two and, and, they're, and to be in their vibe uh, versus reading anything in the news right now is probably <laughs> <laughs> extended <Right>. Christmas gift. <laughs> um, you know, you mentioned the uh, East Oakland Boxing Association, and I watched that clip. Um, and it involves Ellen, yeah. and of course, America's favorite <laughs> uh, lesbian on TV. And yeah. I was quite jealous that you know, <laughs> got to partner with Ellen. And anyway, so um, you know, just the the truck. It, it was part of it was her holiday giveaway, yeah. mm -hmm. right? And then so watching that truck and her in her cool suit and the Santa hat, and you pull up the with the truck and all these toys <laughs> and these these kids and the look on their faces um and then watching your both your interaction i mean uh, i'm not a stalker or anything but i do <laughs> i do <laughs> i do i do look at some of your videos on your instagram and stuff and it's almost like you you're the same that you are with your kids with a lot of these kids that you meet out there and um you know i'd love to hear just uh what you're hearing from kids, you know, directly from, I, I would imagine like, you know, you've made my dream come true, but just how you've also impacted them um, directly. I think the, the most consistent thing you hear is that, uh, especially the kids in Oakland, they, there's such a connection to anybody who shows up where they are and meets them where they are, you know, with whatever resource, nugget of wisdom, just any like just a you know a grain of care and love like you you mentioned that word before and that's a real thing and so um you take the the most extreme example of you know i don't even know how much money was in that that truck uh wow. about products and stuff that we were able to give to those kids and and hopefully change lives in that process but i think just the 
the act of going to where they are and seeing them and, and making them feel special and cared about and that there's people out there fighting for them on a daily basis. Um, I don't think they get that message very often. And so that's the, that's the impact of it beyond the material things and the opportunity. It's mostly just the encouragement that, you know, we're human, we're, we're, we, we matter. And um, there are people out there that are looking out for our best interests. And I think there's an appreciation for that. So that's the, that's the most rewarding thing that keeps the, the, you know, the truck going down the highway, for lack of a better yeah. term. And so I think for us, that's, uh, that's huge. Yeah, um, I feel like, you know, just like we all want to be heard in here, the kids want to be heard as well. Um, and it's so it's so crazy to me because watching the show, I'm sure some people were like, oh, it's a truck full of iPads. <laughs> Great. And I think it's less what you hear and more what you see. So you see, you know, these tears in, in a child's eyes and, and then you realize, oh, it's not because of the iPad. Well, it's a little bit because of the iPad. <laughs> but now... <laughs> Now, this child has access to an endless amount of educational apps and games that are going to help them further, you know, their education while they're there at um, East Oakland Boxing Association. And it's just going to open their minds and worlds to an endless amount of possibilities. And I think that there's power in that, um, that something like an iPad could possibly change um, the next few steps of a child's life. So. Mm -hmm. That leads me to the second pillar, which is learn. And you've done, you already have done a couple of things that are really great and amazing, such as you know helping kids or um, you know fill out their college applications for the first time. We've talked a little bit about that before, uh, but let's let's talk about you know the learn part Absolutely. and your commitment to youths continuing their education. So I think I'll share the stats with you. Um, 12% of um, Oakland public school students um, graduate within six years um, of graduating high school. That's insane, 12, only 12%. Um, and so clearly there's a lack of quality education and resources for um, children that just need, need an extra push. And so I'll let you talk a little bit about um, what's out there and who we've been partnering yeah. up with. I think uh, like I said that that number is staggering, but in terms of you know this part of the child's journey, um, it's extremely important. We all know that for us, it's a, a learning process in terms of how we really want to create impact. Right now, it's been around you know college application uh, access and and. Uh, you know, further support once they get into college. There's, you know, two organizations that we worked with um, in the past year, College Trek who, and uh, EOIDC, the East Oakland Youth Development Center. Um, both have infrastructure to support, you know, kids as they go through the process to, you know, do their applications and, and um, even, you know, some support to, to even enter uh, college. And then, again, that, that, that support system and that, uh, that network to be able to you know see them through that that process because you know college is a whole big world in and of its own and and uh you know you need that support even not just to get there but to get through it and so those two organizations are near and dear to the eat learn play you know team and um it's been amazing to, to we went to college track to their offices right downtown oakland and, and watched um about it's probably a yeah. a little under 100 um new college applicants, second generation uh, college applicants that were submitting their application that day. And, and I'll tell you what, like the energy in the, in the room, like it made me want to go back to school just because it's <laughs> like they're, you know, uh, all, all the uh, applications are going in. They're all you know, doing it at the same time and they kind of go up and they hit this button and they say, I've completed my process. I can't remember the, the, the proper term, but they basically shout out to the whole room what they just accomplished. Yep. And it's a celebration. Where they were going to be going. Yeah, and it's a celebration in terms of how big of a step that is, um, and how they're not taking it for granted. They're going to take that opportunity and run with it. So um, for us, it's just about learning about how to really make an impact in that, in that space, and and partnering with the right you know uh, organizations and, and groups that are in the community, uh, you know, attached to these kids and and uh, and supporting them how we can. Uh, you mentioned you know, Oakland and a lot of stats around Oakland, so it's obvious that um, you have a lot of love yeah. and, and care for Oakland specifically. Uh, 
it's it's obvious, like you know, for for even someone like me who's just reading about it, that Oakland feels like an extended family to both of you. Um, let's talk about why Oakland is so important. Absolutely. You wanna- well, <laughs> we got to uh, got to drive a parade bus down uh, Broadway three times. <laughs> But, but that's not why. Humble brag, humble that's brag. That's not why. Humble brag, sorry. I had to throw that in there. That's Warriors, we need a little uplift right now. It's been yeah. good. It's been good. We'll be back. Um, no, nah, it's just, it's our adoptive home. We were just babies coming out here. I think I was 21 when I got drafted, and Aisha was 20, and um, we didn't have any kids yet. We were just setting up life on our own. And, you know, again, like I said, where we came from, Oakland adopted us. And um, not just what we do on the quarter, you know, what Aisha's done in her business, but just there's just a, a culture and an energy and a, um, a realness about, about Oakland that uh, we resonated with really, really, really well. And I think, um, you know, everywhere we go, um, again, I've heard some, you know, those, those connections, people, you know, just want to know a little bit about you and just support you and, 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 and celebrate you. And we want to do that for, for the city that's, that support us, you know, for these last 11 years this is where we, you know, we've raised our kids so far. And I think, uh, it's been, it's been a, an amazing journey just coming from North Carolina to out here and just, you know, understanding what Oakland's really about. Like that's a big jump. And for us, you know, um, wouldn't have it any other way. And so for us to have any opportunity uh, uh, to, to give back um, to, the, to the city that has given us so much, it, it means a lot. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just going to keep clapping <laughs> for like 45 more minutes. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Aisha, you want to add something? Yeah, sure. I mean, I think for me, it's where I became a mom. Um, we have three children now. Um, and it's really where I, once I became a mom, I started to notice. I thought she was having Oh, you thought she there. was only? Yeah. No, she's, I think she's in the room. Our, <laughs> our oldest is here watching. She begged us to come. Um, but, I, you know, you kind of tend to turn a blind eye to the things that are going on right in front of your face until you become a parent. And then your world opens up and you're like, oh, my goodness. Um, and I think for me, wanting to, to start our uh, foundation in Oakland was because that's where I noticed the need firsthand. Um, and, you know, once our oldest got to the age to go to school, that's when I started becoming aware of the void that was around her and that, you know, the, the the stats at the time were one in six children mm-hmm. across the country were going to school hungry. And I was like, that could be the person she's sitting next to in class. That's ridiculous. How do, how do we change this? And so it's really, it's the place that I, I'll never forget in our Jack London Square apartment. We, <laughs> I, <laughs> No, (laughs) we, we, uh, I, I just, I just realized the void. And, um, as a parent, you don't want to see any child in that situation. And so I just, you know, the seed was planted, um, and I needed to make an impact and make change. And so we don't have to, I don't want my daughter growing up and, you know, having children and having to think about that. I don't want anybody having to, to deal with that. And it's something that's, again, so solvable. And so why not start there? Why not start now? Um, it's and and the, yeah. the thing, you know? Last thing I'll add to that is just the, the people that we've met that are, again, yeah. in the community doing the, the, the team and just the, the, the sense of responsibility and accountability for, you know, taking care of the community. There's so many... Um, just powerful, special people. Some in this room. Mm-hmm. Um, I always talk about Regina Jackson from EOYDC, who's my favorite person, just in terms of like, just when you talk to her and you sense the passion about, you know, like I just said, that the need that's there and how that, you know, that, that she can go about attacking it and and just the success stories that, that come out of her program and programs alike, like, it's it's really easy to get to get motivated and excited about what how special uh, the Bay Area is, but Oakland especially. Yeah, and I agree. I mean, I, you're both uh, you're putting you know Oakland on the map in today's time, 
in terms of highlighting the issues that we really need to be talking about. And a lot of the issues, you, they're, they're national, um, so you know we're, we're not immune to mm-hmm. homelessness or the crisis that we're experiencing with displacement, mm-hmm. gentrification, and these things that lead to, that impact you know, communities of color, uh, and uh, that also leads to poverty that many you know, children are experiencing, something like food insecurity. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's a solvable, you know, f- issue. Um, but at the same time, when people think about Oakland, when people think, even now San Francisco, people are saying, oh, I'm afraid to step into San Francisco because of what I'm experiencing, what I'm seeing. But I feel like you're putting out, you know, you're telling people stories. And we really, really have a strong community here of people yeah. who are digging in and taking care of our communities and doing great work. So talking about some of the great people um, that you met. Um, let's talk about, you know, the people that you want to partner with, uh, some other folks that you are continuing to partner with and the organizations that deserve to tell their stories. Absolutely. Um, do you want to take this one? I think, yeah, like you said, the power and um, and what Eat, Learn, Play is and how we want to represent it is it is the power in the collective too, because like I said, it's not something we, we want to get in the program, we want to get into, you know, policy change, but the, our investment in organizations that are doing amazing work and kind of what you spoke on is it's about awareness, right? Like there's, um, there's an ability for us to be able to have the, you know, the megaphone out and, and I, you know, talk about the groups that we've talked about before and go through the whole, it's sitting about us, you know, going down on all the receipts, but it's literally just saying our awareness, uh, our ability to raise awareness on the issues that are at hand, the people that are doing the amazing work and where money can re- and, and time and resources can make a true instrumental you know change is 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 what we're about and so um i was thinking about our, our launch event i mentioned and, and working with oakland parks and rec uh group and and their town camps that they have you know over the course of the summer and we have almost a thousand kids that are at our launch event they're all a part of the town camps and and like being able to support them and, and provide scholarships to have kids just be able to have access to eat, learn, play programming through, you know, those town camps over the summer, which are really, you know, trying times for kids at that, you know, developmental age when you're not in school and you're, you know, uh, parents are, are struggling to figure out exactly how, you know, how to keep the kids engaged and to, um, you know, keep them in, you know, safe over the course of those summer months. Those opportunities, um, are going to continue to influence every kid's chance to be successful. And so um, I think that process of identifying and, and vetting out those, those organizations is what the power and the team that we have and then the networking and, and the ability to be in the community and kind of hear from, you know, the people that are in touch with where the needs are. And so that'll be an ongoing conversation and, and, and an understanding and um, really proud of what we've done in the, you know, less than a year. And so that gives me and I know Aisha and our, our group a whole another level of excitement about what's to come for sure. Uh, you, uh, you talked about like, you know, your children mm-hmm. and, and you wanting them to grow up in a different world. And I think we all want that for the next generation, but like what would a uh, more, equal and, uh, you know, just world, what would that look like for you if you were planning out the future, not just for your own kids, but yeah. all the kids out there? I just feel like everybody should be afforded the same chances. Um, um, equal opportunity, you know, the chance to great education, um, safe spaces to play, um, you know, and healthy, nutritious meals. I mean, it's these fundamental things and it sounds so silly when you say them out loud, but it's not. And there's people that don't have any of that. And so for me, it would look like every child, no matter what, we ensure that, you know, they have access to all of those things um, so that we're not, there's, it's 2020. There's no reason to leave it to luck for people when there's a world that we're able to change it for them. And so it's, I just, yeah. I like that one. Yeah, I, I like do that. too. I do too. I like that. By the way, Stefan, you know, um, I used to serve as a board president for San Francisco Pride, and it was during the, the, the years. And, and the most exciting thing ever was that we got two parades in the month of June in, in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> but the greatest years were, you know, we, we there would be the Warriors um, uh, parade, and That's then amazing. and then yeah, a couple days after it'd be the San Francisco Pride Parade. <laughs> so it was like millions of people just walking down the street <laughs> for a whole weekend, um, and. Uh, it a very proud moment at the same time um just this feeling of being so so free and mm -hmm. and so part of your world and and the bay area and our world and all these communities like coming together you both bring like so much fun this this aura of just um incredible fun and i know you do it with your children because again i watch videos on your <laughs> social media um, totally fine <laughs> And then I also witnessed it back there. <laughs> um, and oh yeah, you witnessed a lot back there. Yeah. Hi, Riley. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, are you are you always having fun and you know going out there and and, and especially with like when kids are around and, and and I'll add this. I mean, the holidays. You guys showed up to an event with over two thousand families in the Bay Area dressed as uh, yeah. the Grinch, but like a prosthetic mask and then we went, we, we went all in we went all in yeah now, christmas Our, with the yeah. curries is an awesome event that we do um where we were at uh where were we at uh fox theater sorry yeah fox Thank theater you. in oakland and um we were able to serve over 500 families and yeah it's been the applause is yeah. not for us. It's for the people that support you know, our organization that give us the opportunity to be, you know, to create those experiences. And so uh, we really wanted to up the ante this year with that. So <laughs> we did the prosthetics and I, I tried to do Everybody the Grinch voice and us. the whole deal. It didn't work. It, 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 did it, it worked for a little bit, right? Like, <laughs> this is, you sure? Give me, come on. All right. <laughs> You can't you can't walk in with the Grinch with like this cameras and people all following us. Easy tell, but anyway, uh, just to create that experience for the kids was amazing. Um, obviously, over the holiday season where there is so much need, you know, from a meal perspective, but we try to provide as many, uh, you know, resources as possible um, and all the essentials and. and uh, we had so many partners that came yes. together. I, I could run that list for a whole day, but yes. it was un unbelievable. And so um, hopefully everyone that was a part of that felt special about what we were able to create. And that's only going to continue to get bigger and better. But fun is something that I think at this point in our, in our relationship and in our ability to kind of leverage everything that we have, um, we only want to do things that are that we're passionate about that, like you said, we enjoy doing and um, this is a, a labor of love in terms of, you know, committing as much time as possible. That's part of the reason why now is, is why you learn play yeah. is, is what it is, because you don't just do this just to do it. You, you really get behind it and you put, um, you know, all that you can into into uh, making it successful for the people that you want to impact. And and, uh, you know, Aisha loves to say it's not about legacy. It's about impact. Like everybody has the opportunity, no matter what scale it is to uh, to look back and say, yeah, I used every bit of, you know, uh, the resources that I had, the connections that I had, the money that I had to, to make a difference. And, and you feel good about that. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's, that's been, that's been a, gr a huge part of our journey for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Which makes you, you know, the most, uh, one of the most perfect couples, probably. Uh, like far, a, uh, far from <laughs> it. Far from it. I mean, relationship goals for sure. <laughs> um, amazing parents, right? Yeah. And you know that you're raising your your humans will grow up to be pretty caring, amazing humans who also have fun. We hope um, so. Right. And cool. so I kind of want to stay on that. I mean, you've you met when you're teenagers, uh, 14, 15 years old, in the then got together later in college. Mm -hmm. I'm, I really am not stalking you, you both. It's you, fine. <laughs> I think it's on Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. I think it's fine. I know. I have this thing where I can remember just certain little tidbits. Yeah. But what, what I'm getting at is that um, you have a real sense of strong commitment to each other. And, and now it just sounds that I feel like maybe the, the mojo behind it all is uh, that you both have a lot of fun together. Is that, is that, that's true, right? Wait, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> what makes it all work? Depends so on well. if you're golfing that day or not. <laughs> 
Yeah. I'm just it. joking. Touché. I'm just kidding. Touché. I'm Touché. kidding. No, yeah, you know, <laughs> yes, absolutely. We have fun together. I think, I think what it, what it is for us is, we we never want to get too comfortable, and um. I said this the other day, but like people talk about getting the bag, like. <laughs> What? Uh, people. <laughs> people. <laughs> break, yeah. it, break it down. Break it down. So I said this once before, but everybody talks about securing this bag, this like invisible bag of like wealth and luxury. And who cares about that when there are people starving? So it's like, you know, it's, we don't, we, we know that we're blessed, but we never want to get too comfortable in that. And so we feel like it's our duty and our mission to give back and to help the people around us and the people that have raised us and supported us so much over the years through our adulthood and now with our own family. Um, we, we wouldn't feel right, the world wouldn't be right if we weren't doing something to help make change and impact. So that's, that's really what it is. It's not about, while this is fun and it's it's a blessing to be able to see the shift, yeah. um, it's more so about just making sure that you know we have gratitude and are giving back to this beautiful place that has given so much to us. Thank, Thank you. you. And just uh, like it's, it's weird because we never it's it's very surreal. Like every day you wake up and you kind of think about like what life is and, and, and kind of your reality and you try to make sense of it all like everybody does. And I think for us, <clears throat> a part of like kind of what we stand for and um, you know, how we represent our families and all that, Aisha is amazing at just the authenticity and realness about like what's going on in her head and being able to like relate to people, whatever level. And so like sometimes, you know, you gotta be okay with how it's, it's received because you know, People care what you have to say. Uh, you're not going to please everybody, but uh, the biggest thing is about you know being real, being true, and authentic, and um, being all right with that. And I think everything that what ELP you know represents is, is a manifestation of that. And I think we all have a chance to be bold and, and courageous in terms of you know living that truth out. And so I think that's a. Uh, that's important, and I've actually taken a lot of. I'm buttering up to you. I've taken a lot of you know. Um, <laughs> A lot of inspiration from that, for real. To be honest, like over the, being in the spotlight, it's not easy. It's not easy at all, um, and it's something that you take the good with the bad because there's way more good than bad. Um, but we're all human at the same at the same uh, token. So for us, uh, to your question, like it is a connection and a support between us two that makes it all work. It's not always perfect. Every day is you know, a new challenge, but. Um, the good and the fruits that come out of that, I think for us, are, um, it helps us make sense of this crazy world that we live in, for sure. They're just really great, amazing human uh, beings. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, which, my ne I, have, I have a story to tell, okay. to tell both of you, to tell all of you and then everyone else who's watching this right now. <laughs> uh, you know, when I was growing up, it was like middle school and I really wanted to play basketball. Um, <laughs> but but I, you know it, my mom she was really strict and she wanted us all to to go to college and she kept piling on all this you know these classes but anyway um seventh eighth grade i go to Foot Locker and i want these basketball shoes so bad um nikes i'm sure jordans or something like that right but they didn't have my size the curries weren't out yet yeah the curries. i was like you mean they weren't <laughs> under armors <laughs> close 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 no, but, but but they are now, and and it, and, and and in a special way. And I'll tell I'm telling you this story because I asked the woman. I said, "Can I try on these shoes?" She said, "They don't make them in your size. Mm -hmm. um, they're obviously male basketball shoes." And I said, "Well, can I just try on the smallest size that you have anyway?" Because I wanted these shoes so bad. And she was so annoyed with me. Like they don't fit you. We don't make shoes, you know, for <laughs> little girls. And so I walked out of the Foot Locker so sad, and I tell my, my sister, my younger sister, and she's, she's a year younger, but she's like 35 years older in spirit. <laughs> so she like waltzed back in there. I was like, she wants to try on these <laughs> shoes. You will let her try on these shoes. Anyway, she let me try on the shoes because uh, she got in trouble by the manager. But <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward though uh, to 2018, um, you know, a young girl, 
writes to ah, you. I got you now. Yeah, yeah. I got you. <laughs> and asked why, uh, you know, the Currys, the Curry shoes, mm -hmm. basketball shoes, why they don't make them in, in, for girls. And you responded, but like in a way in which I wish I had that opportunity when I was her age. But before that, bef before he responded, I said, ooh, she got you. <laughs> <laughs> what you gonna do? <laughs> you partnered with Under Armour and you made it happen. You, yeah. got, you got her, you know, the, the shoes are out. And tell us all about that because I mean, that's Not every of, basketball yeah. star, you know, responds in that way. No, that's part about just listening and being open and understanding, like, you don't have everything figured out. And so for, for me, we, we did make them in her size. The problem was she was going on the website and looking under the girls' section, and my shoes weren't listed under the girls' section. So her experience as a fan of mine, wanting to be a part of my story, wear my shoes, you know, there's a... Uh, sense of pride to be like, oh, I'm going to the girls section. They make them for me. They're my size, like you said, and I get to rock them and, and feel good on the court and go, you know, shoot from 30 feet and, and try to <laughs> try to you know live the dream. And so that's when we. She wrote me a, a handwritten uh, note. Uh, Riley Morrison. She lives in uh, in Napa, and she uh, she's nine at the time, and she wrote me a letter telling me about her experience, how frustrating it was to you know have to go to the boys section uh, to find her size. Of the youth boys section to find our size and you know this is something that Under Armour and myself should, should try to fix and so um, part of like her experience I took a couple of days to call Under Armour um, make sure that we could make do something about it make the switch you know make sure that they were labeled correctly on the website I wrote her handwritten note back uh, you probably saw it I posted it back to her um, to let her story be known to the world that we were trying to fix, you know, an issue that was uh, kind of taken for granted for it, you know, at the beginning. And part of the understanding of, you know, how we can leverage opportunities like this to make a true impact, Riley Morrison's story, her writing a handwritten note, changing the labeling of my shoes on the Under Armour site, led to her designing the sock liner for my Curry 6 International Women's Day shoe that she personally hand drew. All of the uh, money that was received on, on the, that, that signature shoe went to uh, donors choose um, to support all of the STEM programs throughout the Bay Area from last year. So it's like <laughs> the whole... <clears throat> The whole process and like just the benefit of like being able to just uh, again hear her story and figure out all right, how can we really make a true impact like Riley gets to now grow up and know that she impacted other kids lives because she was bold enough to speak up and thankfully I had partners that were courageous and quick enough to, to listen and make a change and you know that impacts crazy so that, that's how we try to leverage the entire um, you know uh, all the relationships and partners that believe in us uh, to, to, you know, go out and, and do some, some pretty cool things. Yeah. That was cool. But also a strong message to all the young little girls out there that, you know, they can be equal as well mm -hmm. and they should, they should be equal, which, um, Again, another amazing thing that's part of your foundation, that's also part of your core values. Uh, you got two girls. Uh, well, I shouldn't, in my world, we never, never want to put gender on top of everything, I, yeah, as far as how they identify, at least uh, for now. And, and then a wife, a wife, but a wife who has five restaurants, um, <laughs> two television shows. Oh, yeah, <laughs> A, a New York Times best-selling book, uh, and probably the list goes on. I can't list them all tonight because <laughs> I have 23 minutes left. But also a mom, and so Most for important. yes, yeah, for all the women here tonight, uh, those who identify as women who are also hardworking, career-oriented, a wonderful mom, and also moms who want to give back to their communities, Aisha would love to hear just kind of. How do you, one, how do you do it all, but, but two, um, yeah, well, let's start there. <laughs> I think the simplest answer is you just do it. <laughs> um, you, I mean, I feel like all women know, like, 
you you have a child, like you just do it. Something clicks in your brain and you're looking back on the time that you spent not as a parent and you're like, what what was I what was I really doing with my time? Because I'm able to do this, this and that now and raise these children. Like what what why couldn't somebody have told me to better use my time? But I think you just do it. And for me it's realizing that there's no such thing as balance. It doesn't actually exist. Um, and that we're all, um, whoever you are, just running around like a chicken with your head cut off, trying to figure it out. So if we continue to realize they're all in the same coop, Ooh. Then, we're, then we're good. We can be headless chickens together. <laughs> so it's like, that's where I find peace, is like knowing nobody has it together, and like, let's just... Marshawn was right, you take care of your chickens. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what? <laughs> You have that, to fill so me in on I'll this later. I <laughs> Double on I missed that one. <laughs> fill me in on this I later. Got you. Oh, you, don't worry about me. All the you know sayings, idioms, meanings, like I never get them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they go in one ear or the other. <laughs> English is a second language for me. <laughs> Even though I was born and raised here. amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I speak one language. Um, Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> By the way. I, I did have a chance to go to International Smoke uh, just the other day. I wanted to channel, you know, I keep hearing from everyone who's met you, you in person, me. like kids and, and, and adults. I mean, uh, the adults were running after you up, upstairs <laughs> earlier, uh, but who are just so fond of you and who keep saying like how great, honest, genuine, and cool you, you both are. And so I, I wanted, to, I wanted to, to, to really get to know you without having met you first. Uh -huh. So that's why I went to International Smoke. And um, I, I just want to say the, the oysters with the miso butter. Thank you. You yeah. like that? I, I told you. the woman who's, uh, uh, who served me the drink, I said, man, because she asked me, did you like it? I said, it was so velvety. What <laughs> is that? Whoa. Yeah, but Thank you know, you. it was so wild because it served on in this... Uh, this is it a clay pot? It's a it's a really hot. It's pot. a really really hot cast iron skillet, and we put salt rocks on and get them real hot. So we pour this lemongrass tea, and it like infuses the room. It's it's amazing. See, I told you. <laughs> uh, anyway, I brought that up just because I mean, you truly make great food, Thank and you. you're so uh, conscientious of flavors. And y when you you talk about food, and then also with eat, learn, play. You also talk about how it's so important for people and kids to feel nourished. Yeah. Um, and I, I just don't want people to walk out here thinking that, you know, just the work in itself is is just about giving back to, because you care about this uh, this issue, but that you're also extremely passionate about food. Yeah, I really am. I, I think I realized at a young age what a vessel it was for change um, and how much it brought people together. Um, so I grew up in this big Jamaican household. My grandma's like a six foot tall Jamaican woman. <laughs> she still has her accent. It's amazing. Um, but they would prepare food and people, neighbors, strangers would come over and eat um, because they enjoyed it so much. But I noticed people started to build relationships and they started to communicate. And then within those lines of communication, they started to make change, small pockets of change, um, uh, regardless of what it was for. Um, and so I just realized like how powerful food is. Um, and that's why I'm so passionate about it. Um, um, it's universal. Um, and I'm, I'm also passionate about it because, um, you know, I believe that every kid, adult should have access to food to be able to create that communication and that camaraderie and that sense of love um, within food. So, Just very quickly, I assume your kids love your food as well. Most days. <laughs> <laughs> Most days. Oh. Well, you know, Eat, Learn, Play, uh, it, you just launched it last year, which it's not even a whole year mm -hmm. yet. You've already done a whole lot. You've partnered with some great organizations, gave a lot of love to organizations here in the Bay Area, also partnered with some major celebrities. Um, who are some folks in your world that you'd, love to tap into who might have just as big of a platform. So, yeah. Like, you asking us his name drop? No. 
<laughs> I'm like, who could you that? <laughs> who could you text of all your oh, uh, boy. friends, you know, that, that also might. <laughs> I'm laughing because I, I talk about being surreal. Like, um, I don't know. It's just weird when you think about a guy that I looked up to and I know everybody probably in this room and around the country know how much of a uh, influential figure he is, but like President Obama is. Uh, I know I hate I hate name dropping, but it's a guy he's, I, I've had a pleasure to get to know over the last four or five years personally. Sorry, playing golf sometimes. Um, <laughs> but uh, in terms of what him and Michelle represent, and you know the way that they've used their platform consistently yeah. to uplift people, to share, to share hope, inspiration, um, and put, you know, their money where their mouth is, um, you know, with what the Obama Foundation is doing. We've done some amazing things with, with that, uh, their organization, as well as My Brother's Keeper, um, which President Obama you know, founded when he was in office. And, uh, I don't know if there's any other better example of uh, you know a couple, but also just two individuals that are extremely intelligent, extremely articulate, passionate, and have a vision for how they can impact and change the world. And um, you know, like to be able to name drop them, say, yeah, we know them. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty cool, but it's uh, it's more than it's more than that. It's a, it's another sense of. Uh, encouragement for what we're trying to do uh, in our community and you know with the resources that we have available and and a model for how to do it um, and and to know that we have a, a a long runway hopefully to to really figure this out like you know we, like you said we're just getting started and um, you know a lot to learn a lot to grow but I think it, it's just been amazing to watch them and get to know them and understand you know what, what they're about. So how close are you? Like, do you have his phone number? I know how to get in touch with him. Let's say. Right. <laughs> <Just> saying, wow. <laughs> and uh, I imagine, you know, Michelle. Yeah. It's her birthday today. It is. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for that. <laughs> she's, she's, yeah. Probably, yeah. she's probably watching the live stream right now on her birth notes. Oh. <laughs> I was like, oh man, sit up straight. She probably uh, is. She's probably like, yeah, make me so proud. That, that would be very sweet and really cool. But yeah, um, yeah I, I guess, how could you top that? I would say that you top it with Michelle. Mm -hmm. Like, I, that's what, that's what, so I, I would say it's the, the, that's our couple goals, if you will. <laughs> um, even down to the way that they've raised their children. Mm -hmm. I mean, just being able to pick their brain and hear their, you know, values and morals and how they believe, you know, in sending them off. Like, they, they're really goals, you guys. <laughs> um, but I think for me, being a foodie, again, um, Michelle with her Let's Move campaign and just, you know, paying so much attention to healthy nutrition and being active, I think um, is, is really... Um, admirable for me and then the global girls alliance just everything she's doing is so fantastic and so if we could if we could make an ounce of impact and change um of the impact and change that they're making i feel like we're one step in the right direction so that's that's the do you, are, are you kids aware of like how in I mean, I'm sure of it, how incredible you are as mom and dad, and how incredible you are as a, a championship basketball player and, and two-time MVP. Was it three-time? I have to apologize. Basket Since the time that they didn't give me the shoes, I just didn't play basketball <laughs> as much. But I do good. know that, That's you know, good. Listen, I'm I, always so proud when we see you play. Yeah. I'm right there with you. I, I tried to play basketball in middle school a couple of times feeling myself <laughs> shot the ball in the wrong basket lost the whole game and that was the end of my career it's fine <laughs> i overcame that obstacle life is about stepping stones and building blocks everybody <laughs> it's fine. good but yeah yeah i i mean do they or do they know do they talk about like uh they, are they aware like all this work that you do that you actually give back to the community it's not just about like showing up on the courts or showing up at, a, at your restaurants or on being on camera or being hounded by people like me? <laughs> I, think, I think they're they're aware to a certain extent. Um, not so much our, our 
four-year-old and one-year-old, but Riley, who's here tonight, our seven and a half year old. That's why she wanted she's, to come. Yeah, I, th that's what, I think that's why she wanted to come tonight. She wants to understand where we're coming from a little bit more. And I, I really appreciate that passion from her at such a young age. And so we want to be able to nurture that in her um, so that she can have a heart for good and for change when she, as she gets older as well. And so if she, she, wants to know anything about us, that's what I want her to take away from us as her parents, um, other than that we love her so much and love them so much, but um, that part of things, yes, they can know all the things. The other <laughs> stuff, keep it under wraps for a little <laughs> while longer. <laughs> I asked that just because I thought that it would be great to get a, a glimpse or a view of, of a tiny human who's around you a lot and what it might be when you're supported and you're nourished or you have mentors and parents mm -hmm. like both of you of what the future could look like for Riley and Ryan and Cannon and all the other kids you know who are going to grow up in the future and so eat learn play a foundation launched by these two incredible human beings that we're so blessed to have in the bay area and to call our own our our hometown heroes um, all of us can be a part of this. All of us can be Absolutely. a part of of your journey to end uh, child hunger, um, to ensure that children have an equal opportunity to go to school, um, an equal opportunity to play and to be in sports and to be active and to be physical. And so that was a very poetic way of saying. That was nice. <laughs> that was very nice. Yeah. Um, how can we support you? Because I think, you know, like you said, we're, it all takes a village. All of us can get behind this. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. I, I think it's important first to say that um, we want everyone to know that we um, provide 100% of our um, operational okay. costs. Um, so everything that's donated goes directly to the cause. It doesn't fund anything <laughs> that's going on behind the scenes. Um, so I think that that's important to state. Yeah, but I mean, it's just one, just the fact that you're here and, and uh, willing to you know, listen for an hour about what we're trying to do and uh, just let us paint the picture for how important ELP is to our hearts. And I know there's some people in the room that are already, uh, you know, a part of the team and, and uh, we appreciate that support because obviously without you know, the help of uh, trusted partners and friends and and uh, people that are, again, of like mind, none of this would be possible. So we truly t acknowledge that and, and are extremely grateful and appreciative of the people, you know, in the Bay Area that want to make a difference and are so selfless in that pursuit. I'm looking at you, Anil. <laughs> Anil from Workday over here. So in, just in terms of just like uh, being a part of, 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 of the vision and allowing us to, you know, coming on that journey with us um, would mean a, a, a lot. And so, again, we're in our first year, and uh, I think we've demonstrated what, what, is, what we're capable of and what's possible and how we can truly make a change. And um, it's going to continue uh, even more so as we go forward. So, it's uh, again, your time is, is, is important. Your resources are important. But just allowing us to be here to be, you know, you know, champions for you in terms of what we're trying to do in the community. That means so much. So thank you all very yeah. much. I think for for me, just like closing words on my end. Um, no, we're not closing yet. I just well, wanted to make sure that we ask folks <laughs> uh, to, to support your organization. I should say absolutely. it's not a private foundation. It's, it's a nope. public one. Right? And Super public. Super public. <laughs> Which means if you have a cell phone, all of you do, um, I saw you t taking selfies and all that <laughs> stuff. So you should take them out again. You can take another selfie and then go to eatlearnplay.org and donate because we could all do that. Um, and uh, also, if you're with an organization or, or a corporation, uh, yeah, can they reach out they to you? They can definitely or? reach out. Um, <laughs> I'm sure we can find there. You can go to Eat, Learn, Play and and uh, .org and, and submit uh, the information there. We have an amazing uh, team behind us that are, will respond and find a way to make that connection and uh, hopefully do some amazing work. So don't be bashful at all. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, it's 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 the power in the collective. And I think for us, if there's anything that uh, it's been demonstrated is the power in the team uh, with what the Warriors have done. I don't take myself too seriously to say I did it by myself. There's literally a, a group of people that uh, had shared values and, and, and knew the role that they were playing. And so the same thing we apply to everything that we do um, off the court. And uh, and that, that applies here. So in, just in terms of how, you know, how can we get the best team possible to go out and do some amazing work and all you guys have an opportunity to, and uh, a way to be a part of that. So I, that's, that's something that uh, we will continue to acknowledge and celebrate for mm -hmm. sure. Yep. Yeah. We tend to be very mild in our everyday life and asking people for favors and things. And this is definitely the only occasion in our lives where we have no remorse <laughs> <laughs> because we know what great change it, it can help make and what an impact it's going to make in, in the place that we all live in. So were those closing words or no, no. Okay, good. I, good. Okay. No, yeah. We'll save it. We, we have a, a few minutes left, but I pro there are so many folks who wanted to ask, ask questions. Oh. You, I mean, they don't get to ask questions tonight. Oh. Um, oh. <laughs> Dang. But I do know that, I do know that um, it would, we, it we would hurt some folks. Like, some yeah. I mean, we don't to. mind. I know, is there some eager people that really want to ask a question? Is it, yeah, uh, Set like everyone up like that. Say what? When are you coming back? Oh, not the basketball question. Not that question. <laughs> See, very that was soon, gonna be a question. I, was I, tried, gonna, I tried. I tried. I was gonna throw a basketball question in there, like okay. I, I know, Let's go. Um, but I mean, Rick Welts got married. Yeah, uh, Rick Welts is. He CEO. did. Yeah, that's that's the extent of the basketball information that I know, but a lot of people <laughs> wanted to ask about yes, your return and how you doing, how's the wrist and. It's, uh, it's been an interesting year all the way around, uh, to say the least. Um, obviously, we've been on an amazing five-year journey and three championships to, to, uh, to speak of. And uh, I think for us, <clears throat> obviously, with the, uh, with, there was a lot of excitement about the move to San Francisco uh, this year and how amazing Chase Center is. And it is amazing if you haven't been. It's, um, it's something to see. And... and you know, we're building that atmosphere that, that we're accustomed to in, in terms of what Dub Nation is. Uh, and so, you know, right now uh, it's obviously different and a lot of injuries, myself, Clay, um, and a lot of young guys, but we're building. And uh, it's going to be exciting to kind of see where, where the next, you know, four to five year run takes us. So this will be fine. I'm, I'm hopefully back uh, in March at some point to get on the floor and uh, get back out there with my team. It's killing me to, to be out, but, uh, you know, a little, uh, a little mental and physical rest and, and recovery uh, after this last five years is, is I'll take advantage of it for sure. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been weird, been weird, but uh, we'll be back. I like to say, like, things can't bloom without a little rain. Mm. So, a little rain never You're hurts. You're dropping some gems tonight. <laughs> I think we still need to find out the thing about taking care of the chickens. You didn't, uh, so Marshawn Lynch. Uh, I know there's 49er fans in here, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to them. They're going to get it done on Sunday. But uh, Marshawn was talking about after the game. He was actually giving some really good advice on uh, creating perspective for young guys, especially professional athletes, in terms of uh, protecting their, their, their mental uh, health, protecting their, their bodies and taking, you know, investing in themselves while they have the, the chance to be playing at that high level, but to take care of their chickens and chickens referring to money. So you only have a certain amount of time in the NFL, NBA, whatever to earn, you know, earn your, your, your income, take care of it so that when you're in retirement, you can do amazing things like donate to eat, learn, play and <laughs> really make a, a true impact on the, <laughs> in the community. So. She said chickens, take care of your chickens. But she's talking about different chickens. That's, I just had to bring That's back genius, because I would have said, like, kale or spinach <laughs> or something. <laughs> so that was... Say what? He has it, but I might have to call him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to order some chicken for Marshall. Yeah. The play. We didn't hear about the play. The play part of the play. Yes, oh, absolutely. Sorry. Oh, wow. 
Yes. Good call. The question oh, was the, uh, the the play, the play uh, aspect, eat, learn, right. play. Uh, we covered. We talked a little bit about uh, playgrounds and, and making sure there's an opportunity mm -hmm. for kids to be active. Mm -hmm. But we should be specific. Mm -hmm. There Absolutely. is a plan um, to build more playgrounds and then also programs to get kids to be active, be in sports. Mm -hmm. um, nine out of ten of lower income kids in the Oakland school district. Um, don't get the recommended 60 minutes of, of playtime. That's insane. Um, and less than 20% of those kids um, aren't in any sort of uh, extracurricular, extracurricular active activity. So whether it be organized basketball, so, yes, organized sports. Thank you, honey. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's that's ridiculous. And again, I know I say this a lot, but very solvable. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's a domino effect. So um, that's why e-learn play is so important to us because it all starts with that healthy meal. They have a healthy meal. They're able to have higher brain function, focus in class, um, and then have the energy to go outside and play. And then where we come in is, you know, creating these safe spaces to play. Um, because imagine going home after a long day of school and you're hungry still, and there's not a park within five miles of your home, um, or not a safe sure. park for you to go to within five miles of your home. Um, so that's really like the premise of play for us, is to create these safe spaces for kids to play and encourage that active lifestyle. Mm -hmm. We did it in Oakland, uh, in Concordia Park, uh, they would do a court refurbishment there uh, Oakland Parks and Rec has been a huge help in that respect. Um, like she said, just being able, like for me personally, you talk about passions. Like I know how much um, competition and camaraderie and that uh, element creates again self confidence. It opens you up to people, kids from different backgrounds, different interests. Uh, like you know, being out just out outside, and you know, in today's age, obviously with you know. Uh, a tech hungry world that's obviously important but you have to have that balance and for kids you want to make sure you you protect that as much as possible and so if, if we can create you know those safe those safe places and then partner with with uh programs that are or organizations that are creating programming uh for kids to be involved with um and and giving them that perspective at a young age that they can carry through whether they play professional sports or not that's not that's not the issue it's about just uh, all that you can learn by playing, uh, you know, sports at a, at a young age uh, would, would mean a lot. So that's uh, that's the goal. I want to tell you both, um, I'm that kid that you're changing, you know, their their lives today. And and it would have meant the world to me if 15 years ago that I had two mentors like you. I uh, went to school hungry. I went to school ashamed that I was hungry. And I couldn't play a sport because the truth was actually I was never going to buy the shoes. I couldn't afford it. And then sports had become so expensive. And then, you know, fast forward, here I am sitting next to both of you. Uh, <laughs> you made this adult dream come true, but you're making the young Michelle Miao's dream come true in an equal playing field, an equal opportunity for, for everyone who might have, you know, been growing up in the same um, background as me. And so thank you so much to both of you, you for you. Eat, Learn, Play, for thank being so much. Stefan and Aisha and uh, everything that you do for our community. Now is the time for those beautiful, brilliant last words, if you have them. <laughs> well, I didn't actually know what I was going to say. I was oh. just going to start talking. <laughs> but um, I guess I would love to, first of all, thank you for yes, saying thank that. You, um, it's amazing. Um, that I guess I want to leave everybody maybe a little uncomfortable um, with a couple of just sitting up here. I was thinking, wow, you know, as a parent, um, it takes a lot of hard work to even have the means to be able to discipline your children in the way that we all, a lot of us in this room may have grown up being disciplined by our parents. And just a couple of statements come to mind, um, things like, you better finish your breakfast, or you better clear that plate and eat your dinner, or you don't go to school to socialize, you go there to get an education, or put that phone down and get outside and go play with your friends. I think about statements like that, and you know, 
having the confidence as a parent to be able to discipline your children in that way, if we call it discipline, or to nurture your children in that way. And I think about all of the parents um, that can't do that because their kids don't have a safe park to go to and they want to protect them and keep them in within the confines of their home or um, the education is not the best at the school that they're going to or they can't they simply can't afford to send their child to school with a breakfast. That is devastating. And so I guess I just encourage you all um, to put yourself in, not in the kids' shoes, but in the shoes of the parents who are doing what they can um, but just need a little bit of help and they need that village. Um, know that you can be that for them um, and that we're here to support that along with all of our partners and all of the um, organizations out there that are already doing such great things and that we're going to bring everybody together and amplify this thing and blow it up and um, hopefully change the course of a lot of um, young people's lives. So thank you for being here. Uh, do you have Let's give a great big, big thanks again to Steph and Aisha Curry, uh, co-founders of Eat, Learn, Play. Thank you very Thank much. You Thank, so you. much. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. That is... All right. That Stop concludes the, the second oh, yeah. of the Equality Series. Thank you to Salesforce. Thank you to Alaska Airlines. Thank you to the Commonwealth Club. Thank you to all of you for making yeah. our Friday night so amazing. Remember, you can go to eatlearnplay.org to support this incredible work. You can make the donation right now, and uh, I, I could take checks for them <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> Um, we're going to yeah. take a selfie yeah. right quick. Yeah. Well, you we guys have to, ourselves? We're going to have some fun while, we, while we're Wait, here, too. Wait, what? So stand up, stand up. <laughs> Do well, I get, I yeah, mean, can I get in? in? We got to oh, kneel yeah. down. You're getting in. We I'm, I'm going to try to get everybody. We got to kneel down, you know right? Works. Yes. All right, here we go. I see everybody back there. What?